is who you are. That 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 is who you are.
God, you have showed us that you are faithful. So we put our faith and our trust in you. You are worthy. You've showed us time and time again that you're true to your promises. So we invite you into this place and move in us, move through us. We love you and we praise you. Amen. You can be seated. My name is Hannah, and I'm happy to see you all here today. Um, if you're joining us online, we'd also like to welcome you. If this is your first time, you can fill out a uh, Get to Know You Connect survey through our website and let us know a little bit more about you. And a pastor may reach out for a phone call, or if you're interested, a coffee date to just catch up and discuss the service or get to know you a little bit more. So as a continuation of our worship, Oops, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit lost. But also for everyone in the, in the room today, if you have a prayer request, we have um, a QR code at your table. We do read those, we pray for those weekly. Um, you can scan it with your car or with your phone and let us know how we can pray for you. You can also fill out a more traditional card in the back if you prefer that. So as a continuation of our worship today, we receive our tithes and offerings a number of ways. You can give through texting with the number on the screen. You could also give um, online through our website. And then we have a black box in the back of the room that you can put physical items in, hopefully money-related items, <laughs> if you prefer that. Um, but before we continue, I'm going to pray. Um, so Lord, we welcome you to this service, we ask that you would move in our hearts to give as you've given to us um, generously and that you would use the gifts of this church to bless the people in the church as well as those outside of it um, who are hungering for you. And we surrender it to you. Amen. So I would now like to welcome Greg to continue our service or, or summer series on the fruit of the Spirit. Good morning. Yeah, my name is Greg, Greg Wessel. I'm the worship pastor here, and I'm pleased to, uh, to continue in, in this series, The Fruit of the Spirit. Uh, you know, and so often, religious teaching is on how to be a better person, how to avoid going to hell, or how to avoid having a purposeless life. These are like religious goals, right? But Jesus brought good news uh, that only through him is there real life. Amen? Amen. All right, I'm going to, it's, we're, we're kind of a, all spread out. I'm going to need your, I'm going to need some, some of your encouragement here today, you know. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. preach. Uh, so, Jesus brought us good news that only through him is there real life. Okay, that was the same thing that I, oh yeah, there we go. Now, for Christians, we don't live just a good life so that we can have life in Jesus. We live a good life because we do have life in Jesus, because the Holy Spirit lives in us. Because we're growing in our life with Jesus, we become more like him. We're formed in his image more and more as we, as we grow in him. And our life shows the fruit of that life. The fruit of the Spirit. In the fifth chapter of Galatians, we read, So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is...
today. That's, that says it all, right? Uh, here's a helpful thought by Tim Keller of what growth in the fruit of the Spirit is and what it looks like in Galatians 5. In normal religion, the motivation is morality, or the motivation for morality is fear-based. In gospel Christianity, the motivation is a dynamic of love. And now Paul spells out how we grow in character through this new dynamic. And his headline is, we grow as we battle. To be led by the Spirit is to change and to be changed, to be the people we want to be. The Spirit-fueled development of Christ-like character is liberating because it brings us closer to being the people we were designed to be, the people our Spirit-renewed hearts want us to be. We are saved by faith, not by growing fruit, but we are, saved, but we are not saved by fruitless faith. A person saved by faith will be a person whom, in whom the fruit of the Spirit grows. The fruit of the Spirit has internal roots. It is not about traits or characteristics. It is about a change much deeper than that. Think about an apple tree. Do the apples on, on the tree make it alive? No. If you tied apples onto a dead tree's branches, that wouldn't make it alive. No, if you tied apples onto a dead tree's branches, that would not make it alive. The apples don't give life. They are a sign that the tree is alive. But the life produces the fruit, not the other way around. It is worth looking closely at each aspect of the singular fruit of the Spirit. So I like that, that apple tree that Tim Keller compares it to, that the the fruit, if you tied fruit, it's kind of like putting, an or, putting ornaments on a Christmas tree. The, it doesn't become, like the ornament doesn't become a fruit of a Christmas tree. And the, fr- the tree isn't suddenly alive because you put something on it. So to be led by the Spirit is to change and to be changed, to be the people we want to be. Now a tree doesn't grow from a seed overnight and produce fruit. We don't instantly have all of these characteristics, all these fruit, when we become a Christian. Like a fruit tree, the fruit of the Spirit is deliberate. We tend to our relationship with God, and He continues the work He started in us. We turn to Jesus, and the Holy Spirit leads us. How can you tell if you're being led by the Spirit? You are changing, you're growing, you're being formed into His image. The fruit of the Spirit are the traits of God that can be cultivated in us. So today, we're focusing on this fruit of the Spirit that is faithfulness. Now, a dictionary definition of faithfulness would be a quality remaining loyal and steadfast to be utterly reliable and true to your word. And I think that's what we think of when we think of faithfulness, right? That you're... that reliability, loyalty, consistent, right? And I think uh, if you look at the word, though, it literally means full of faith, faithfully, right? So right there, right in the word, you have the why. Because as followers of Jesus, our faith leads us to trust him. And because as we spend time in him and spend time in his word, we get to know him. We know he is good all the time. We know how much he loves us, that he gave his only son that we might live. We know he works out all things for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Faithfulness is a fruit of the spirit alive in us. We are led by the spirit and we know Jesus and that he loves us, and we remain true to him. Jesus tells us a parable about a man and his servants in in Matthew. He says this, It will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants,
entrusted to them and put it to work for their master. They knew this would please him to have it come back with gain. The third servant must not have known the master as well as he thought. He thought he was playing it safe by not stepping out in faith, and it displeased his master. He held tight to that with which he was entrusted rather than take a risk. He operated in fear, not faith. Now ask yourself this, what has God entrusted to you? A little? A lot? Have you been full of faith with what he's entrusted you with? Good question, right? The opposite of faithfulness is to be an opportunist, to be, only be a friend in good times, a fair weather friend, right? Like, if you're a Bears fan, you're probably a Fairweather Bears fan, right? So, true, true story. Uh, an opportunist will look for how their actions will benefit themselves. I'll scratch your back if you scratch mine. Have you ever tried to make a deal with God? I'll give you this part of my life if you just do this one thing. If you get me out of this one jam. You know, I think college students do this a lot, you know, if you, if, I get, if you help me get an A on this exam, I'll just, uh, you, know, you know, come on. Anybody ever do that? Come on. Every, I, think, I think everybody has. Now, that is not a fruit of the Spirit. That is not faithfulness. Now, some of you may know that my mom has been battling cancer, and we recently saw her oncologist to talk about some of the test results and to see how the cancer is responding to her treatment. And while we were waiting, my mom turns to me and says, no matter what the doctor says, whether the cancer's going down or if it's growing, it's not gonna change my faith in God. I'm gonna keep trusting in him. That is faithfulness. That's trusting God in faith to be God. That is fruit of a relationship with a loving God who wants to see healing in every part of her life. Faithfulness is an outflow of God's goodness. We believe that God is who he says he is, and we continue in that belief despite the trials of life. That means we trust God, trust what God says in the Bible, even when we struggle. We trust he will work out everything for good. We trust he will work his will in us. And we trust that our situation on earth is nothing compared to our future with Jesus for eternity. And the only way we can have such faith is by the Holy Spirit's influence. He testifies to the truth and compels us to seek God. The Holy Spirit makes us faithful. Faithfulness is a fruit of the Spirit. Some of the ways we demonstrate faithfulness, uh, this is just, this is only a, a partial list, but these are some things that came off the top of my head. By faithfully serving Him and listening for His voice, by faithfully coming together every week to worship with our community by faithfully giving of ourselves to love and serve our neighbors, by faithfully praying for a friend in their time of need, by faithfully and consistently giving offerings to your church, by faithfully helping the poor. These are all an outflow of the Holy Spirit dwelling inside us. Joyce Meyer compares faithfulness to a jigsaw puzzle. When you buy a jigsaw puzzle, it's usually because, you know, you like the picture on the box, right? And sometimes it's thousands of pieces, and it winds up on your dining room table for weeks. You know, my dad really loved uh, jigsaw puzzles. My, my mother-in-law also did. You know, and, it, and they would be on the table for an extended period of time sometimes. You put the pieces in groups, according to like color, edge pieces, 
and you work for hours trying to put this thing together. And at some point, maybe after trying to force two pieces together that don't fit, maybe that frustration makes you want to quit. You look at the picture in the box and think, is this puzzle even supposed to look like this? I think they put the wrong puzzle in the box. Of course, you do know that the puzzle, you know that the puzzle will look like the picture when you complete it. So you keep coming back. You keep showing up at the dining room table to find out, to find where that next piece goes. You keep looking at the box and looking at the puzzle and then at the box again and then the puzzle again. And it starts to come together. And slowly the puzzle starts to look like that picture on the box. Soon the puzzle is finished and it'll stay on the dining room table so everyone who comes to the house can see how crazy you were putting together such a crazy difficult puzzle. And at some point, everybody wonders in this process, is this worth it? Everybody has times where they want to quit. They want to stop giving their tithe, stop hanging out with their neighbors. They're so annoying. Stop being kind to that coworker who has the opposite political view, the wrong one, of course. As the, they, you want to stop just that, that connection, right? The fruit of the Spirit is faithfulness. So you keep keeping on. Because like working that puzzle, you've seen the picture on the box. We're a kingdom people. And heaven is coming and come, has come to earth. We know the king of all creation. And we know he is good. So we keep showing up because we have tasted and seen his goodness. We've tasted and seen his love in our life. We step out in faith because we like the picture in the box. And we want to see that come to fruition. We want to see that complete in our own lives. And we had a wedding this week. Caleb and Audrey Anderson, I'm sure they're, they're watching from, from their hotel room. Hi. Uh, my prayer for Caleb and Audrey, who, who, were, who were married this week, that they would know how important faithfulness is in, in your relationship. As you get to know each other uh, more and more by sharing your lives together, that you'd remain steadfast and faithful to each other and to God. And we all know marriages that were torn apart because one partner was not faithful to the other. I believe the enemy tears these covenant relationships apart by telling lies. The other doesn't respect you, doesn't value you. It creeps fear into the relationship. It it creates doubt in the relationship. And what's needed is faith. It, it tears down that relationship in it and at the faithfulness that is in that relationship. The enemy does the same thing to try to tamper with our relationship with God. He tells lies like, God doesn't love you. God doesn't care about you. God is punishing you for something you did. These are not truths. But when we spend time in his word and time in his presence, we get to know Jesus. Our heart knows Jesus. We know his character and his love. We can be reliable, faithful servants because we believe that God is good and God is faithful. We show up consistently. We know we are backed by the one who sent us. Let's stand in this place. And as the band comes up, I want to pray for us. Let's invite the Holy Spirit to fill us, to show us where he wants to grow in this fruit of faithfulness. So as I pray, pray in your hearts. Uh, and as we ask for God to speak, listen for his answers into your life. Holy Spirit, we come to you. And we ask you to come. We ask for you to lead us. We ask for you to prune us. Right now, as we take a moment to listen to you, 
into what you want to speak into our lives. Holy Spirit, what have you entrusted me, entrusted to me? What have you entrusted to me? Holy Spirit, how have I grown in the fruit of faithfulness as your follower? Holy Spirit, how are you leading me into faithfulness right now? Jesus, we trust you. We put our faith wholly in you. Give us grace to do what you are calling us into. Fill us with faith. Cut away those things that would hinder us. Cut away those things that would hinder this fruit to grow. We put our faith and trust in you. Wholly in you. And we ask this in your precious name. Amen. So we're going to move into a time of ministry and worship. We have prayer team members in the back. Uh, we're ready to pray for anything you need prayer for. We believe God hears our prayers and that he loves us and wants to bring our struggles into his shalom peace. That this perfect will would be done in our lives. And getting prayer is a way we step into faithfulness and where we see God's faithfulness. So let's worship.
bread you've shown us. We've tasted and seen that you are good. We pray that you would help us to grow. That we would show the fruit of the Spirit in our in our lives. And those fruit would make it evident that we are alive in you. So come, Holy Spirit. today. You're formally dismissed, but if you still are feeling like God is compelling you to get some prayer, go ahead and do that. Grab somebody and have a great day. With one voice we sing in worship and in wonder Saying you alone are unlike any other Hear our praises as we welcome you together Jesus In you we find a true There's no need to fear, no need for hesitation. There's a name that echoes over all creation. Jesus. Lift him high above the heavens, over every situation. Tim Hart.